with my best friend Mirth Meowzer. Had to be back and very curious to is like rewatch uh, Megami's story. Um, it was like when I was first starting hers, first playthrough, I wasn't too drawn in by it, although there was some interesting stuff, but as I really went through it, it started engaging me more and more until it didn't. So I'm actually really curious how my thoughts are going to be uh, rewatching this with full context of where it goes. Megami's story is one that I'm not particularly fond of. Partially because it has a really bad ending, I would say by far the weakest ending of any of the routes in this game. I would say so, which is really unfortunate. Um, a lot of people f based, put Megami kind of on the, I guess you could say, lower end of the list when ranking all the characters, and I personally don't think that's fair. Because she's actually a very en engaging and entertaining character, even though she's not one you necessarily agree with, and I would argue not even supposed to like. Like, you're like you're not looking her looking at her the same way you would Natsuno or Usami. You're not thinking, oh, that's a cute character that is like that. I really hope achieves their goal. It's just like, no, this is a kind of more toxic character that is kind of self putting herself on a path of uh, self-defeating her own goals. And you're kind of is like hoping maybe if she learns from that, she'll have a better, better, better ending note for her story. And it's kind of unfortunate that's not where the arc goes. Because it's really engaging for most of it. At least I found it engaging. To be honest, I didn't really... Really? Um, there's a few routes in this game that I was not very engaged in. I would say Iyori, Hijiyama, Megami. Um, they're the big three that just stick out to me as like, oh, I didn't really care that much, hey. Um, like, I can appreciate that Megami is definitely an interesting, well-written character. But she's not exactly one that I care about. I didn't find her story particularly engaging. I did for a very specific reason, and I can kind of point that out as we go through it. Because um, it's it might, a lot easier to point out when we go through it. Uh, but I guess Good to luck. summarize, it's... It's that going through her route, it really made me feel like this game understands the more complex complex nature of, I guess you could say, uh, ro it's like kind of romance stories. Because it's so easy to, um, especially for anime romances, to just kind of take the easy route or, mm. to, or have a relationship that's not very healthy, but act like it's endgame anyway. And I was... It was very refreshing when it got to Megami's route, where it feels like the game knows this isn't healthy, and that if she keeps going down this unhealthy route, she is not going to be rewarded for it. And it really felt like they had a message here. They didn't, but for the most part, it sure certainly felt like they did. And I found that so refreshing. Like, you know better. This game gets it. It makes me wonder if there would have been more justification for the ending if we got the 50% of the game that they didn't end up making. Like, I don't if there know. would have been like if there would have been more build up to it. Like maybe some of the things that happen right near the end of her story arc would have happened a lot earlier in it and we would have gotten a decent amount of time in between those events and the ending where suddenly Karabe loves her. I just like, think maybe that it would in have general been... is maybe but I just think that choice in general was a mistake. Like, well, I, I feel really like they could it. have redeemed her more, is my point. Like, okay, maybe, the re maybe the reason her arc is as unsatisfying as it is, is because they were so dead set on the ending, but it ended up being one of the places they didn't really have the time to properly execute. That That's my theory, that. anyway. But, but yeah, we'll, we'll go through it. Um... <sighs> Story of Megami Yakushiji. It's gonna be black screen for another 30 seconds. I don't know oh, no. why it's doing this today. Nothing has changed.
I guess maybe your computer's just upset today. I mean, it could be the classic problem. You gotta turn it on and turn it off. And turn it off and turn it on again. Aww, no. I love this song. This is another great song. Welcome to 2024. Let's immediately we are almost pause there. and go to the mystery files. Natsunomi Nami is an energetic and honest female student who's part of the track team. She loves watching sci-fi shows and is an avid fan of the supernatural who genuinely hopes to have an alien encounter herself. Her childhood nickname was Dr. Space. She is a family of five, including her parents and little brothers who we will never ever ever see. Yuki Takamiya is her childhood friend and her closest confidant. One day, Minami finds BJ hiding in the track room. He's in search of a memory cell and Sentinel number 17, so she decides to help him find them. So we're really. S Ooh, and we've got Tokisaka Shrine, a shrine near Sakura High School rumored to be haunted by ghosts. And the 2060s, the city is in ruins due to the kaiju attacks. And so many red spots. Oh lord. If we go to the archive, ooh, all five of them are over here. Number eighty-four. So we're looking in between Iori's prologue and Jiro's and Hijiyama's. Call this one. Uh... Oh, you mean the not it's like not to know events. I thought you meant the Megami one we're still on. It's like that was Oh no, early sorry. Sorry, not to know. Yeah. Although I'm pretty sure Megami's also start really early. Yeah, like I mean, this the, one is very early on the timeline. Um because we're still in the year four, not the year five. Yeah. Um because all of the sectors are on eighteen year loops. And Despite being different time zones, the year that they're on is the same. So, 1984, fucking 2024, 2064, etc. are all at the same time. Meanwhile, 85, 25, and 65 are at the same time as well. Because it's not time travel. It's not time travel. So yeah, five events in a row. So much content. Let's get to it. This is usually a good shortcut, but... Hey, at least we have Tomi in this event. It is so gross today. I guess on this note... Bloody as heck. Um, My shoes are soaked. This scene kind of establishes that Tomi and Megumi are, you know, best friends. Or high school Which, best friends. And this and is they, and reinforced in the destruction battles where one of the pilot skills you get is a passive buff when these two are on the party at the same time. But the and thing it, is, they almost never interact outside of this and the um, and the destruction battles. It's like, for best friends, they do not get nearly any screen time together. So I'm not... So you don't really get a lot... You don't get much time seeing um, this friendship that the game, you know, says they have. It's I not like it, I don't believe it, it's just... I wish it got communicated in a way where Megumi starts to isolate herself and shut oh, out Tomi during her idea. downward spiral, and Tomi tries to reach out but can't, and then gets distracted by her own things. And they that could have had perfect. a scene where they, like, talk to each other. Again, another thing that, frankly, if we got the full game, I expect this would be in the game. That's the thing, it's I think... so much. That, that alone would have added so much. And that's some, only just a few things. Some characters have a lot of room for improvement if there was more time. Some characters are fairly satisfactory already. And some of them need the time. I think Megami is a case of someone who needs the time. Um, and I think there's a lot of places you could interject new story content in to make her arc more satisfying overall. Um, like, on this note, since we're just about to meet him, um, similar to how there's not a lot, there's hardly any interactions between her and Tomi, there are basically no interactions with her and Izumi, and, how and her love for Izumi is basically the catalyst of her entire route. 
So she's in love with someone that, the, and the audience never even gets to see why. Like, yeah, I think we just get, like, one scene would go a long way. There are like three scenes in the entire game where the Juro Izumi that she falls in love with, which is Juro from one loop ago, versus 426 Shiba and Fluffy, which is Juro from two loops ago. Um, there's like three scenes with one loop ago Juro in the entire game. And uh, one of them doesn't. One of them doesn't even have her. Yeah. Technically, this Izumi isn't from a previous loop. He's just, you know, basically another person, a different personality that got. Oh erased. right, yes. Whoops. Sorry. Yep. So yeah, there's like three scenes with Juro Izumi in the entire game, and one of them doesn't even have Megami in it. The one scene that they that those two get together, like actually talk together, and like I love you, I did this for you, is when he's dying in her arms, and like that's all we get. Like, and that's I, literally I'm... the next scene that these two are both in. Like yeah. there is no scene in between this and that chronologically. And I really think just one would have gone a long way. Hmm. Like, I would have maybe liked two or so, but just one. Like, she meets him, and then chronologically, he's dying in her arms. Like, we're missing a lot. What's up? You look bummed. It's nothing. Also, I love the ambiance with the music and the sound effects in this one. Sound effects are so good. It sounds phenomenal in my headphones. Thinking about how no one talks to you again. Is that what's got you down? It's just because you're so quiet, Megami. People take that as you thinking you're better than them. Or that you're cold and distant. Not sure which is worse. They just need to get to know the real Megami. Love the supportive side, the gentler side to Tomi, that we don't get to see super often. To really deserve more interactions. Like like you said, I, it would have gone a long way if Tomi tried reaching out to her, but Megami in her, as you say, downward spiral, spiral just kept cutting her off. The one who's a hopeless romantic. And a cool, laid-back girl, just like everyone else. Maybe then they'd have an easier time talking to you. Hey, you should try posting videos online, like me. Oh my god, she's so relatable, that's what I do! It could really help you come out of your shell. I think part of it was... I was just getting into content creation and taking it seriously just as I played this game for the first time, which is part of why I ended up liking Tomy so much. Because um, this was like 2021? I think so. I played it in 2021 anyway. I didn't play it yeah, before it came I, out. I played it like... Um... Yeah, I played this during the end of 2021 to the start of 2022. Like that December to February period, just a year ago. Um, and that was about when I started taking this content creation seriously. Um, nowhere near as good as I am now. I mean, I, would I call myself good at this point? I don't know if I would, to be honest. Very consistent. I put out content very frequently. Like, so frequently it's actually a bit much. It can be very difficult to maintain that schedule and I feel like shit when I fuck up. Because I'm trying to do Umineko chapters every day to ensure that I finish it before the next world war. Um, and even then rate. I still might not. You're at a consistent rate. I mean, there's no rushes, you know, even, even if you need to take a break now and then. But, yeah, Tomi and Megumi. <laughs> Tomi and Megumi, sorry. Yeah, I like Tomi a lot because I relate to her because we're both content creators. I think I'll pass. I wish we got this to see a bit more of Tomi's content creator side, to yeah, be honest. Yeah, yeah, we... Again, I think just one scene would have gone a long way for that. Mm. I guess this is an instance where I think maybe a little bit more slice of life, just showing their life in uh, 2024, just a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot. Would have, like, um, would have helped a lot. Like, I need a joke where Nenji and Tomi kiss for the first time. Nenji asks- oh, actually no, Tomi asks, 
what do you say after you kiss someone for the first time, and Nenji, having learnt about her content creation, and like, been paying attention and gotten into it, but not telling her, says, don't forget to like and subscribe. And it would be this really heartwarming moment where we see that Nenji's been listening and getting into it more, and Tomi would be surprised at how heartfelt it is and probably get embarrassed about it. I don't know. I it's think, just funny I to think me. She'd, I think she'd get embarrassed and, you know, kind of start, like, it's like blowing him off a bit. But, you know, in, in the typical, it's like Tomi way, where she's not really blowing him off. She's just embarrassed. Mm. <laughs> oh, I God, we're 15 this, minutes in. <laughs> I think it's this scene that, uh, really, that real where I really came around of on Cassandra's performance for Tomi, because I did like the scene uh, with uh, Tomi beforehand. It's this scene. It's this scene where I just let myself forget how familiar her voice is, and where her character really bloomed. You really are great at singing, Tomi. You watched my Inaba Rabbit video? Mm hmm I never knew you were so talented. <laughs> well, you're in luck. I'm posting a new one when I get home. Like, I hear her voice, and I don't even remotely think that that's the voice of Morgana. That's just the voice of Tomi. Hmm? Like, I, I don't confuse them for a second. What is it? Did you see that? There was a light. Oh. I saw it in the water. Probably just a car headlight. Now they're covered in mud. And it's like the flash of light and that their umbrellas went flying. That's so good. Mm. Looks so good. Did that thing just fall from the sky? Are you okay? Ah, oh, jeez. I'm completely soaked. I think and my that's least of your concerns. Away. What a drag. died just now what even it is fell that just a, a few dozen feet ahead a few dozen feet ahead you would have we get some more personality in the run cycles here where she's determined in the max speed sort of like Awkward hesitant. and hesitant in the medium, and calm and reserved in the slow one. Could it be a piece of an airplane? No, that's not it. But what then? Oh, this is wild. I gotta document this. Oh no, where'd my phone go? I think you'll be lucky if it still works. I don't know, they make waterproof phones and shit now, right? Resistance, that light. doesn't mean much. And it's moving. You drop it in the water, it's gonna die. Uh, this seems dangerous. What if it, like, blows up? And we gotta report this to the police. Uh, right. Uh, uh, something's happening. Get out of there! Me. Mysterious boy, and it's Jiro. This guy just popped up out of nowhere. What the? You saw it too, right? At this point, you're wondering, Where like, why is from? Jiro here? Why is he in 2024? And it, at least when I was watching this, it almost made me think, okay, what happened between when we last saw him to this, not realizing uh, uh, this was before we saw him in, you know, uh, 1985. Which is why you should check the event archives constantly. Are you alright? Because they'll tell you. Where am I? No. When am I? God love the classic line. When? 
Well, today is October... No. The year. What year is it right now? Oh, it's... 2024. <sighs> 2024. I must have been forcefully shifted here. The front line's been broken. It's over. It's all over. So with full game context, this is immediately after the Sentinel infection incident of Sector... 4? No, 2. Sector 2. Um, in the 20... In the Battle of the 2060s, they have an infection incident where Ryoko implanted the code DD426 into Sekigahara's Sentinel, which ended up spreading to a bunch of people who participated in that battle. In particular, Jiro Izumi at this point gets a problem with his brain that forces him to deal with it they're all infected and basically are all doomed to eventually have their kind of uh, basically minds go hollow mm. one way, and they all have to find ways uh, around that one way or another um, let's see with Okino he basically had his nan is like a nano machine basically copy is like his mind and rebuild it um, I think Seki Gahara just let himself uh start from scratch. Yeah, Sehigahara um, backed up his memories, or like, what was important. Yeah. Yeah, he backed up some of it, not all of it. Um, and then just let Jiro himself reset. Uh, Jiro was completely mind-wiped, to the point where yeah, his, his body was literally hollow and they had to basically rebuild a new person in there. Hmm. Um, Ryoko got to keep a personality. Which but all I'm of not, her memories were gone. Yeah. Which I'm not fully sure I agree with with how much I- Because I, I was under the impression that basically they were kind of all doomed to end up like how Jiro did unless a measure was taken. So I do think maybe Ryoko got off, set off a little too easy, but eh, we'll get there. Um, should I call an ambulance? Uh, who are you? Oh, um, I'm just from the school nearby. No. Then that means this place is next. I'm Juro Izumi, and I've come from the future. This timeline, they're coming. Yeah, if he's come from the future, that means this is definitely immediately after the Sentinel infection incident. It is. Uh, but when I was first playing it, I was so confused. At first I was thinking, oh, did the... Fights I was playing with just a moment ago fail? Are they doomed to fail? Does this happen after that? And then he was like, no, I'm Juro Izumi, and I've come from the future, and like, wait, what? Mm. And I'm just... I mean, again, it's intentional confusion, uh, where you just can't figure out what's where, and it gets your mind wandering about what the heck does any of this mean. And then they fall in love. We don't see it. <laughs> Half a year later. A cat. Oh, it looks so fluffy. Come here, Fluffy. Does not want to be pet by you. Are you alright? You look a little lost. There's Boob Mackenzie again. It's McGee. I was just thinking, in 1985, the West Building doesn't even exist yet. Oh. We have a flash forward of a flashback. And this is a really good song as well. Very mysterious. Oh, I love this one. I needed to see you. Just one last time. One last time? They're coming. And number 13 is the only one that can still fight. I have to go. N no, you can't. 
he won't let you. I actually don't think he was infected. I think he's the only one that wasn't. The only one that got shifted out in time before he could suffer the consequences. Because, uh, it was because of his infection, um, combined with the fact that he fought in that Sentinel for hours, that completely erased his brain. I think it's, it's just, just the fighting for hours. I don't think he's infected here. He's way too functional at this point. Maybe. Taking it could be that possible robot, that, um, trying to fight by yourself. that his Sentinel isn't- It could be possible he's not infected now, but that his Sentinel is. Um, and that being in it for several hours. Because I remember specifically the infection. It was the infection that took him. Um, combined with the fact that he fought for hours. But you do have a point that he's not infected right now. It's not a good plan, Jiro. the others we go through it. You couldn't defeat them even with all your friends. The, that's that's the line why I, I thought... I don't know if I'll be able to protect you all. I, I thought, like, oh no, the... the Parts I just played, we fail. But I can't do nothing. But you haven't even recovered yet. Megami, I really am grateful to you. Okay, now he is infected then. He yeah. hasn't recovered yet. Never mind then. He, yeah, he is infected, that's what I thought. So, this is goodbye? Uh, I guess they... I hope that it's not, but... Megami, this is bad. Scene is meaningful, uh, but I still wish those two had like one scene before this. Just, just a scene that that really let me feel their relationship. Hmm. All I'm really getting here is that they meet, and, and now they're saying goodbye. They're here, just like you said they would be. A line they say a few times in this game. Just like you said they would be. They're here. And now monsters are flooding the port in droves. Right. Megami, Tomi, I've told a woman named Morimura about you. When the time comes, you must listen to what she says. Yakushiji-san? Huh? Again. Oh no, I was too busy staring at your bouncing bosom. Again, she's lingering on the past. She just will not let it go. Both of these characters. Yeah. Both of yeah, these you're characters. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> very much linger on the past, too much so. Again, this feels so intentional where that she is un is like unhealthily clinging on to the past and like that is going to destroy um it's like her re relationships going forward and that this is an action that she needs to change before it's too late. Her entire route is built this way. Like I'm watching this and I'm seeing it all over again. It's like no, they did this. This is how they built it. I wasn't reading it wrong. So why would they end her arc on such an opposite message of everything that they were building before? I need you to stay focused. Miss Morimura, how is Jiro doing? You must forget about Jiro Izumi. The Juro you knew no longer exists. There was nothing else we could do. <gasps> From now on, you cannot go near him. But... It's for his own good. The she loves is gone. Like, they really hammer this in because he is. No, wait! He's gone. <gasps> Juro! He even <gasps> says as much at the beginning of the game. I am Juro Karabe. Hmm. This is the school you attend. Oh, of this song. This, this one's so good. I don't remember it playing often. Really? It, it plays in a lot of pivotal moments, especially, specifically moments of tragedy. Right. Well, it's a very good one. It is? How about we head back to the nurse's office now? It's important to take your medicine, you know. Stop. And we see to now guiding her, guiding him through, which I think is interesting because in 2188, Tamao's designation is being the expert on artificial intelligence. So I find it fitting that the artificial personality that they've implanted into Jiro, Tamao was not only the one who created it, 
but is also the one guiding it and teaching it how to be independent and functional. I think that's a really interesting parallel to carry on, similar to how Okino is an incredible programmer, and that reflects in 2188, where he was the lead programmer. Yeah, I don't know, I just find that really interesting. You have to stay away. Really good He's point. Juro Karabe now. Not Juro Izumi. That kind of matches what I was saying earlier in uh, Juro's route, that he just doesn't fully sound there because he's an artificial personality that's still growing and developing. Mm. I don't understand. He is not the same person. Giving him a new identity was the only way to save him. That can't be possible. It was the only way. I'm sure he would agree. It had to be done. So for now, you need to stay away. At this point, he is still very unstable. Trust me. You're doing this for him. I feel this like as as much as I was complain as I was complaining that I wish they had a I they had an extra scene between Izumi and uh, Megumi. Oh. I do really feel her tragedy here. Like. Yeah, the boy she knew is gone. He's standing right there. She can hear his voice. She can see him. But he's gone. And she's never going to talk to the person she loves ever again. Another point on attention to detail, the fact that you have never been prompted to have a memory with Megami before this. But if you check the thought cloud, the only thing on her mind is Juro Izumi. This is not something that you're prompted to do. You have never had to think about anything as her before. She's never had any prompts to. But if you choose to open it anyway, the only thing on her mind is Juro Izumi, which just ties in so nicely to her character. This is good. Also, I'm remembering why I like her why I liked her route. This is so good. Also the implication that this is a few months after the previous scene. So there's the implication that she's been stalking him for months. Yeah. She, she she can't let she can't let him go. She needs to and she can't. Also, the cat just phases into existence and I, most people I, probably won't notice it because it's just like a game loading thing. Like sure, cool, whatever. He just phased into existence, not a big deal. I've but then you realize, "Oh, that that's fluffy. That's Kyushiba." That's 426. That's a hologram. No wonder he just phased into existence. That fluff. You're that kitty from before. I am a cat, not a kitty. B what? I All right, oh, settle cool. down. No need to make a scene. So, remember f fucking Kyusa Shiba from Jiro's prologue, voiced by the incredibly talented Ben Diskin? This is another character voiced by Ben Diskin, because it's the same person. Noticed it was the same voice immediately. I didn't necessarily take that to mean they were the same character at the time. Although, as the game went on, I was like, they have the same voice. That definitely means something. Um, but, but yeah, I did notice that was Ben Diskin immediately. And I adore the tone he puts on for Flu for Fluffy. It sounds so snarky and condescending, and like mm. just just how much he looks down on everything Megami is. It's great. Like that's the perfect snark a cat should have. Like you compare this to the snark that they try to give Morgana, and no, this is how you do it. Fluffy is where it's at. This is how you ride a snarky cat. Yup. Speaking of snarky cats, I have one in real life, and I named them after this Fluffy. My Fluffy is named after 426 Fluffy. Um, I was only like halfway through the game at the time, so I hadn't seen a ton of him, but I was just like, hey, it's an evil cat. My cat's probably evil, most cats are evil, so I'm gonna name it Fluffy, because my dad was gonna name it something really really stupid. So I vetoed that and just came up with Fluffy because it was the first thing that came to mind. And oh how appropriate it turned out to be. Yeah, I love my cat. And I love Fluffy. Fluffy and Fluffy are both great. People are gonna start to think you're crazy. 
the playfulness of that line delivery. People are going to start to think you're crazy. People are going to start to think you're crazy. That cat just... Good talk delivery. to me? They must have not gotten enough sleep last night. Hey, I'm talking to you. Are you always this rude? I'm putting on accents and shit just to mess with all. imagining it this cat is talking to me so this story is all a giant reference to a very popular magical girl anime called puella magi madoka magica which is particularly infamous for being a dark deconstruction of the magical girl genre that takes things into very different directions than your typical sailor moon or card captor sakura that's stupid. Cats can't talk. You might want to try thinking before you speak. Aren't you supposed to be smart, Megumi Yakushiji? How do you know my name? I know everything about you. You're the one who called me, after all. I... did? Yes. And now I'm here to grant you your wish. Your wish to save Juro Izumi. <laughs> Looks like I hit the nerve. So yeah, I can do it. I like how you I immediately can get his memories know back. that you shouldn't trust Fluffy. Like, immediately, oh, the immediately. signs are all there. You should all not. All the red flags. So and many red flags were anyway. communicating in Semaphore. And she does it anyway. And I think she knows she- Like, she absolutely knows she shouldn't, and she does it anyway. And it's like, it's such a good setup that, yeah, this is a downward spiral, and she's just going down it anyway, knowing that. And no good can come from it. I love me. downward spirals. Of course you wouldn't. It does like, sound too good to be true, doesn't it? Oh, so that's why we're friends. You like downward spirals? <laughs> well. <laughs> no, it's like, I mean, I, I love when stories will, for free. you know, really show the... That is like the yeah the step pro step by step process of a downward spiral where like it's it's sad to see the character go this way but yet it's so engaging like mm. and that's why I love I think yeah that's why I love Megumi's route mostly uh, because it really captures that man it's so good it's again this game knows knows better it gets it until it doesn't but it gets it. I need you to do something for me. After you agree to a binding contract, that is. Again, this is another song that's you pretty really have to to think about it. Root. Very off-putting, and I really like that. Come on, it'll be easy. No experience necessary. And you'll save Juro. Seems like your best option. Megami. Assuming this isn't a dream, or a hallucination, or some kind of cruel joke, what exactly would I need to do for you? I come from another world, one that was destroyed. Technically true. Destroyed by a relic of an ancient civilization. Also technically true, and the ancient civilization talks are one of my favorite pieces of foreshadowing in the entire game. Because oh, yeah. it's 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 true. Humanity is an ancient wiped out civilization from twenty million years ago. Oh really? Twenty million years? I didn't I didn't know that they gave an exact number to it. Yeah, it's twenty million years ago. I think that that's my favorite uh, big reveal in the whole game. Like this has been going on for millions of years. When you combine that piece of lore drop with the scale that Natsuno's um, root gave me, it was it was so horrifying, and I loved that. I loved the horrifying implication of that. That yeah, this this system that's been trying to rebuild humanity has been endlessly 
you know, destroying human life again and again for millions of years by this cold, unfeeling system that's just gone wrong. It's so good, man. <laughs> the themes in this game are so good. It really is. I love is. the dreaded kids. I watched the second playthrough with a friend of mine, and it was so hard not to wear a shit-eating grin whenever the ancient civilization came up, because holy shit, it's so gold! Like, it is! It's so good! An ancient civilization of 20 million years ago, in the year 2188, and that's, 20 and that's million us. years ago was 2188. Man, that is horrifying. I lo in the best way. I, re I, I personally am a huge fan of games that can give me ex ex existential dread. I love when stories do that. It is called the Dimos Code. <sighs> it spreads like a nasty curse and has begun to infect this world too. I must find all the codes and set things right again. That is my mission. And the no big deal job that you get to do. <laughs> if it's so easy, why don't you just do it yourself? You're not serious, are you? In case you haven't noticed, I'm a cat. I, I love this the is sarcasm. My... And that, that line alone is why he's better than Morgana. Yep. Cause he Morgana won't admit he's a cat. Cause Morgana yes. sucks, and I hate him. And he's not funny, and this guy is... You really want to leave the fate of the world to a cat? They actually leaned into Fluffy being a terrible person, acknowledged that, and wrote around it. Morgana yeah. is a terrible person. They try to give a redemption arc, but they don't do anywhere near enough redeeming to justify it, considering how horrible he is throughout the game. Fun, terrible person. That's that's the biggest sin. Like, come on, you can't even make him fun? This guy is fun. He is making a meal of every single line and just... Mm. Oh, I love it. I love it so much, you little jerk, you. I don't even have thumbs. If I screw up, you're dead too. <laughs> don't even have thumbs. Like, the line delivery is so good. I don't even have thumbs. If I screw up, you're dead too. You're only damning yourself if you refuse. I'm trying to gaslight her. And the, uh, all I've cats never... sound like this. This is every cat. Yep. This is how all of them speak and speak. You just don't hear them. Like, this, this is just perfect. I'm gonna never... say that this is probably the best of Ben Diskin's characters in terms of his vocal performance. Tough one for me to nail down. Kyuta Shiba has better writing, Luffy has better vocal performance. But in both aspects, both characters are incredible. Yeah, I think I'd agree there that, like, if I'm talking pure vocal performance and just what I'm really enjoying more, and what the actor is clearly having more fun playing, yeah, I gotta give it to Fluffy. If I told anyone about this, they'd laugh and call me crazy. I'm sorry, but this all just seems so impossible. I'm going to do the it. one logical thing Megami does, and it's optional. There's nothing impossible about it. I've never heard these lines. All right. I'll give you some time to think about it. Because I declined the contract. I suppose it's a good thing you're skeptical. Instead of some idiot who believes everything she hears. Make no mistake. You will accept my contract. It's just a matter of time. Uh. Honestly, really unironically, be the best uh, voice acting I've heard ever heard on a cat. Yeah. Like cats specifically have this. way to bring back Juro. Like this specific energy and kind of vibe. Again, most cats are evil, so they need that sort of vibe. This just, you know, uh, 
so how do I describe it? This sort of gremlin, you know, condescending vibe. And he and Ben captures it so well. Like that's the perfect voice of all cats. I don't think I've ever heard a cat in, in fiction that that sounds that effective. Mm. Then I'd make a deal with the devil if I had to. Well, it's almost like that's foreshadowing for what she does. Yep. Subtle. To be continued. Oh god, I wish we could check these, but we still can't because it's the prologue. I keep on wanting to. I um, think I'm gonna really enjoy going through Megami's route again, and I think I'm going to be twice as disappointed when we get to the ending. I'm but that's okay. I'll enjoy Ben Diskin's vocal performance. That's about it. <laughs> um, yeah, Megami is uh, not a favorite of mine, as I established. But we'll talk about that next time. Thank you all for watching. Do we have any last thoughts we want to end on? Uh, drawing a blank once again. <laughs> In that case, I think that's going to be it. Um... Thank you all for watching, we'll catch you in the next one. I will get these out at some point. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll get them edited happens. and out at some point. But this is the final video for today's batch of recordings, so... Thank you guys for watching, we'll catch you next time. This is Hamburger Chariot and Mirth Mauser signing out. I mean, see you guys. See you everybody.